What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage and we're going to be doing the front suspension upgrades on our Honda Talon. We have Super ATV's high clearance A-arms that are forward offset one and a half inches. So what that's going to do is push your tire one and a half inches forward, allowing you to fit up to 34s on your Talon. Uh, we're going to be installing some System 3 bead locks. We went with 14 inch on 32 inch Super ATV tires. We're also going to be upgrading to the Rhino 2.0 CV axles. These are four millimeters thicker shafts, full chrome alloy design. Uh, they're the best premium high quality CV axles you can get on the market. And while we're in there, we're going to be putting chrome alloy uh, ball joints and also their billet tie rods. So we're going to do a full front end package on this thing. We also are going to be taking off our front skid plate and replacing it with a frame stiffener, which are going to give us double the amount of um, tabs for our lower A-arm. So a lot of work, a lot of parts, but we're going to jump right onto the towel and get lifted up and pull apart the front end. Start off with removing the wheel and the CV nut. Next, remove the brake scraper, brake lines, and the caliper. Remove the ball joint nuts and tie rod from the knuckle. With the spindle removed, we can unbolt the A-arms. For the driver's side upper A-arm bolt, you need to access it from the inside of the cab. Make sure the open end of your clip is pointing down. There we go. We have our new CV axle installed. So when you pull these CV axles, it's going to leak some diffle out of the front. The rear does not, but the front's known to. So it'd probably be a good idea to order. Honda makes a special gear roll for this, and that's what I'm, I'm going to put back in it. And I got it on Amazon for $10, I think, a quart and you only need one quart. So we need to make sure when this is all done, we make sure to fill up our diffle. That's a note. Then we can start taking off the tie rod and then we gotta prep our old parts to get them put back on. We got this clip here we're gonna remove. So there's a metal style band at the back of this. Uh, it's, they're kind of a pain to get off. I always take a pair of vice grips, find the, the crimp connection on it and just get the vice grips behind it or the pliers behind it and just bend it bend it out and slide this boot as far as we can towards the the arm then we can take whatever you can get in there to unscrew this knuckle from the steering shaft it's going to have some lock tight on it so it's going to be Pretty tight from factory. Now we're not going to reuse any of this. This is all the stock setup. 
we're going to be using the super atv billet one and i'm probably later in the future i'm probably going to do the chrome ollie ones i had forgotten when i did this order that they had the chrome ollie arms which i think would of course be stronger than the billet ones so we'll probably be replacing these later with the or not the billet yeah the chrome ollie ones all right now we have all this we can go ahead and install our lower a arm and our upper a arm uh, but what i'm going to do is first get this new arm installed we're going to put some blue loctite on the new one and get the get everything installed with the tie rod and we saw both a arms then we got to go put the new ball joint the chrome ollie ball joint in the knuckle now you don't have to do this you also don't have to do this arm everything's compatible of course with the super atv a arms i'm just doing all the upgrades at once so we don't have to pull it back apart. It'll save us time in the future and headache. Now with our new steering ball joint, again, we're gonna put a good helping of blue Loctite on it because we do not want our steering to come loose. Make sure you use blue and not red unless you're trying to make your life a living dale <laughs> when you go to take it back off. The red, you have to normally use heat, like uh, heat it quite a bit to, to be able to get it off. Now this is definitely harder than taking it off because it's such a large, um, such a large ball joint. You can see my pliers is just quite, not quite big enough to grab around it. This is the biggest set of adjust adjustable pliers. So what I've been using is these big uh, pliers. Oop. These grab it pretty good. So now I can use a pipe wrench, whatever I can to get this as tight as I possibly can. Uh, so we don't have to worry about it loosening up on us. The Super ATV kit does come with a new boot. So we can get it lined up with our, our bolt in the bottom. Push it all the way back and there's actually a lip machined on this for it to set right there. And then push it all the way on the rack and then we can use a zip tie to zip tie around this as well as this we can also put our jam nut on we're going to tighten this all the way up because we will have to realign our front end when we're done okay our boots good and secure now we can put our tire on i'm gonna go ahead and pre-install my new billet tie rod so you can see on screen we went with the super atv bushings and these are self-lubricating you're not going to have to ever worry about oiling these until they're gone pretty much and uh, you can use the factory bushings but i'm here to tell you it is a nightmare to try to get them out we messed with this for about two hours trying to get one out and uh, super atv has made it so if you do use the stock style bushing which they're shown on screen uh, you can replace them at a later date so if you notice inside their a arms there's a groove machined can you see that mm -hmm. so that groove is made so you can stick a pick behind the clip that holds the factory style bushing in the factory style bushing is a uniball setup so it works almost like a heim joint where these aren't going to give you any kind of you know any kind of movement side to side they're just going to go straight up and down like they was intended so these are uhmw material this is the same type of material that their skip plates are made out of and i'm telling you we bang these skip plates off of rocks for an entire weekend and they look brand new it's insane at what kind of beating this type of plastic can take and not get damaged so like i said they're self-lubricating they're going to lubricate themselves as they wear uh, so that's awesome to know these take two seconds to put in compared to the factory ones but uh super atv does have a video showing you the process of getting the factory ones out if you go that route good luck to you because it was awful and these a arms are set you can adjust the bottom a arm to set your caster and or your camber i mean but we're not going to they're set for factory specs right out of the box so we're just going to pop a bushing in each side then just slot it right down in and that's it that's how quick it is and if there's any grease these will come with a blue type grease inside of them uh, make sure to clean all of it out because no grease is needed when putting these in because they're self-lubricating we can go ahead and install both a arms because we chose to go with the chrome ollie uh, ball joint and it's already factory installed in the lower so it will come pre-installed if you choose that option 
in your upper A arm. Your lower A arm, the ball joint is in the spindle. So we do have a new chromoly uh, ball joint we gotta push out the factory one and slap it in before we can finish up this process. So now we can install our lower one. And you could have a problem with getting these in. I start from the very bottom, kind of wiggle it up. I'm not gonna tighten any of these. I'm just getting them hand tied on there. We'll tighten it all at once when we're done. So on screen, you can see the, I guess it's pronounced Matic uh, Harbor Freight tool. And we're gonna be using several pieces out of it to press out the factory ball joint, including this uh, little disc adapter and this little sleeve, number five sleeve. That's gonna cup around the top of our uh, ball joint. And I have pre-sprayed this with PB Blaster. So this side is gonna go like that right there. And then we're gonna set it up in here and then put the other die in the other side that's gonna push out this ball joint. Here's how we have the ball joint tool set up. I'm just gonna use an impact on it. Uh oh. There's our factory ball joint. It's just a press in where the new one takes a clip. So the Chrome Ollie aftermarket ones from Super ATV is definitely a lot better quality because we don't have to worry about this thing ever knocking up or anything. So before pushing our new Chrome Ollie ball joint in, there's this little brass uh, bolt in the end. We're just gonna remove it so we won't damage it and set it aside. These do come factory greased and ready to go. So we have a number 35 socket. We have our ball joint and our ball joint threaded shaft fits perfectly inside this and is, isn't gonna get damaged. Then we have the number five piece that comes with our press kit and then this little adapter here. Now we can just slowly, and I did pre-grease this a little bit just to help it go in smoother. The kit does come with a snap ring. I'm just gonna go ahead and install it around our ball joint. Make sure to get it seated all the way around. So we can now put that little alamite in. It's brass, so we don't wanna over tighten this thing. These are fully adjustable and rebuildable where the factory ball joints, you, you basically replace them when you're done. And the kit does come with some super glue. I'm gonna put a bead of super glue around this lip here, only on the ball joint side. We're gonna take our dust boot and pop it on there. Now I'm gonna let this cure for just a little bit. It doesn't take long for super glue to cure. We're gonna let that cure and then we can install this onto the chassis. So first we're gonna put our upper ball joint on. Now we have that set in place. I'm gonna put a washer behind this. I'm gonna use the factory castle nuts. I'm just gonna place a couple of washers so I can get my hole lined up. We can spin this around now. We'll have it seated. Lift our CV joint up. Slot it in there. Bring up our lower A arm. Get it slid in there. There we go. We're being one side up and one side down. Now it's time to install our tie rod link. Because this is a heim joint instead of a ball joint, they give you the stud shown on screen. We're gonna slide the stud in and put a nut on each side and then basically hammer it down where it'll press itself into this metal sleeve. 
Then we can install the high misalignment spacers, get our tie rod buttoned up. All right, so one side of this has a long taper to it. That's gonna go down in to the spindle. Then we've got a nut and a washer. I'm gonna start on that side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set my opposite side of my high misalignment spacer and about three to four washers. We're gonna go with five. Just so I ain't ramming this nut all the way down the threads to tighten this up. So have a 19 socket and a wrench. Okay. We're just gonna make sure that crams in there really well. So we've got a cotter key, we're gonna slide in there. I'm gonna trim this cotter key down. They're a little bit long. <laughs> no. Bend one side. I put a rim. Other side we're gonna bend straight up. Then we can take off this top nut and these washers and the high misalignment. Drop our high misalignment in there. I'm gonna bend one side down and one side up. So the last thing we have to do is tighten up all the A-arm uh, nuts and bolts and then we can slide our caliper back on. We'll show you how to route the brake cable because that was a little confusing when I did the other side. Um, and then all we have to do is align it. Then we can set it on the ground, push it back, let the weight settle. Then we can do a final alignment and see how it's gonna be. And don't forget, you're gonna to have to top off your diffle uh, because mine drained probably, I don't know, an eighth of its fluid, maybe, maybe a quarter. So I'm waiting on that fluid and you're gonna feel it through this cap right here. You're gonna pull it off and basically the oil needs to set, when the buggy's sitting on the ground level, the oil needs to set just where it's about to pour out that. So I'm gonna squirt it till it's about to pour out and flowing out a little bit and then put the cap back on. Here we can get our shock. So with our brake caliper, what I've found, there may be a different way, but this is what I found that works. Slot it through the back of the A-arm. We can go ahead and get it placed on the spindle once we put it on there. The spindle already has grease on it, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. It's got quite a bit on it. So there's gonna be one hole on the back side. You can't really see it. It's way up in here. And that's where I found you can bolt this lower bracket to. That's gonna keep it away from your CV joint. So that's what I found works. And then up here, they tap a hole in the back side of this right here, but I couldn't get this bent around to line up properly. So what I end up doing on the other side, and this could be wrong, but it seems like other people's done the same thing because I always research this stuff before I film it and look like an idiot. I take off this metal tab that Honda puts on there. I'm gonna run a zip tie around here, this back A-arm support, and make sure that it grabs in that area. Use some flush cuts, and there we have it. Almost forgot, this is a brake scrubber. So what this does is scrub most of the mud off of your rotor so it doesn't get into your caliper. What I found, I was torquing at the spec. When you torque at the spec, you never can get it lined up and I was having to hit it with the impact about that amount. So that's what I'm gonna go with. It looks like everybody else does that too. I'm gonna drop this puppy down. I'll bend it right over.
So as you can tell, we've done a little bit of riding on this front end to let everything settle. And uh, of course, I can't tell a difference, which you shouldn't, because this is not gonna affect your ride in any negative way. Uh, you're just getting more clearance and a lot more strength with this whole setup. Really do like it. I think it looks super sick. Um, I do like the black actually, uh, because it kind of breaks everything up, gets rid of some of the red. Um, with the 32s on a Talon, now this made a tremendous power difference uh, on the negative side, of course. Being 104 horsepower, 32 inch tires is a little bit much for that little engine uh, to pull with four people. So a turbocharger is in our future for this thing because I've heard a lot of people say once you drive it with one, you can't go back. But these tires freaking grip. We haven't been on a proper trail yet, but you can tell by how it bogs the engine that these things are hooking and a getting. Uh, I am going to put my stock front tires back on when we're around the house because I do ride on the road and I do not want to wear these out. So we'll throw these on when we go to the trail. But I highly recommend all these parts. Super strong. We'll put them to the real test uh, soon when we go up to Windrock. So real quick, I do want to note that because we went with 14 inch wheels, uh, the tie rod kit from Super ATV will fit 15 inch wheels, but they're not designed. Those high misalignment spacers and stuff just add too much height for a 14 inch wheel. Now your factory Talon 15s will fit perfectly with these tie rods, but we did the system three uh, bead locks and we was getting, uh, it was hitting the tie rod and there was no way around it other than running a small spacer. So what we did was we got some quarter inch aluminum and we cut two spacers for each side. So we had to space it out a half inch. Also, since we spaced it out a half inch, we had to put longer studs in it just to get a real good bite on our lug nut. So I went down to the local Napa and I did have to drill out my wheel hubs just a little bit to fit the new uh, wheel studs that I had to get. But just to know, if you're running those tie rods, uh, with 14 inch wheels you're going to have a clearance issue uh, so i would uh i would advise to do to stick with 15s if you do the bead locks i would say to go ahead and do the 15s i had already had the tires or i would have went with 15s so uh so yeah just note you will have to run either a spacer a different offset or something to run 14s with the tie rods now i will say the kit the a-arm kit does come with steering stops shown on screen uh, i did not install those those are basically if you're running like 34s and stuff you might get into the fender uh, like the inner fender if you turn really sharp so uh, just be in mind that's going to cut your steering down a ton if you install those but if you are having a lot of rubbing issues we are not we don't have any rubbing issues at all they just said super atv does recommend that if you just to be easy when you're backing up and turning it really sharp just be mindful of that so again i did not install the steering stops but make sure to check out all the links for these parts in the video description the next episode we're going to be doing on this we're actually going to be sending out our shocks to shock therapy they're going to be fully done up our shocks revalving them and doing the spring rate because with all this added weight of like the toolbox the cooler and stuff our shocks are lacking from stock so i can't wait to get those done and we're going to take it on a proper ride on uh, some trails to really test out the suspension the the new shocks new strength of the a arms and stuff we're super pumped so hope you guys are enjoying the build series make sure to comment like and subscribe and make sure to check out those links uh, we also did the spare tire rack from super atv and it's pretty sick it still allows you to open the cooler and you can see some out of the back window you're never going to get perfect view having a spare tire but we went with a second or a, a extra front wheel and tire so basically the same offset as the front. Um, but yeah, so on long rides, we'll have this. We're actually gonna take this off when we're just in random trail rides. But if we go on like a two day trail ride where we're gonna be camping out, I'll throw this on and use it. But super awesome setup. Make sure to check out those links and thank you guys for watching. We love you and God bless.